Hey team, this is Grant David Collins, and welcome to Giving is a Skill, a grassroots giving podcast where ordinary people like you and me learn how to create meaning, impact, and connection with our time, talents, and money, regardless of the amount. On this episode, we are starting a two-part series on giving in the family, so let's get started. So now that it is November, it really is the beginning of what we typically think of the holiday season. And for most people, that means that there is going to be a lot of time spent with family. With this in mind, like I said during the intro, we, we've decided to spend the next two weeks taking a deep dive into family giving. This week, we will be talking about why families are one of the best places to start your personal giving journey. And then next week, we are going to dig into the why and how of developing a culture of giving within your family. So just in time for the holiday season, we are giving you a little bit of an early Christmas present so you can have a little bit more fun with your family this holiday season. Now, I don't know if I've ever met someone who hasn't had an experience where they've attempted to give within their immediate or extended family, and for one reason or another, that giving went horribly wrong. Now, one of our listeners had a story to share that kind of illustrates, I think, what a lot of us get into when we attempt to give to our close family members. So this is what he sent in. A few years ago, my brother-in-law and sister had a funeral that they needed to attend. They have several children, so they needed help babysitting the kids while they went out of town for a few days. Generously, my dad and stepmom volunteered to watch the kids. While the parents were gone, they really went over and beyond the average babysitting experience and treated the kids really, really well. When my brother-in-law and sister returned from the funeral, they were exhausted and didn't show much appreciation for my dad and stepmom. And to make a long story short, their feelings were hurt pretty bad. This was further compounded when my brother-in-law did not include my stepmother on the thank you text that he did eventually send out. Unfortunately, this experience has snowballed into a lot of ongoing resentment between everyone. Isn't it strange and yet somewhat understandable that when family giving goes wrong, it seems to go horribly wrong? As we've been thinking about this concept on on our end and prepping for the podcast, the, the team and I have continued to ask ourselves the question of why. Like, why is family giving so hard when it seems to be the ideal scenario when you look at it on paper? Now, there are likely more than just three reasons, but but here are the top three reasons that we came up with. Reason number one why giving is so challenging in families is because of the relationship proximity. Giving within our families really forces us to actually reckon with the consequences of our actions. It's not like other giving where donations just magically disappear into generic good or those one-time service projects that end when you finish the provided pizza. This can be really painful in terms of seeing the consequences that happen especially when things go south. Okay, so reason number two, there are emotional triggers and history at play. So every family has history, and reaching out to help those who are closest to us can feel rather risky. Our our family relationships can sometimes feel like minefields where we can't predict what will happen as we attempt to lend our support and love to those that we care about. And then reason number three, familiarity. It has family within the word, so it's got to be a reason on the podcast. 
uh, we we often take our family members for granted because you know they're they're always they're they're always there. And this familiarity can make giving seem more like an obligation rather than something that we can choose to be a part of. And it can really be challenging to manage the expectations that come into play as we attempt to reach out and help. Now, reading over those uh, three things, I, I am just reminded of why people often feel that giving is so scary within their families. Like there's a lot at play. There's a lot that can uh, potentially go wrong. And so that is why a lot of us kind of dodge out of this. And what really makes me sad about this is that these barriers often stand in the way of, of things that can strengthen a relationship. And so therefore the the opposite happens. Our, our relationships become weaker when we could use these types of experiences to make them more close. And what's fairly ironic about this whole situation is that the same characteristics that make family giving a challenge can also make family giving the perfect environment for developing our skill set of giving. Let me kind of reverse these last three things that we talked about and, and show you what I'm talking about. When it comes to relationship proximity, we can start to see that although it can provide some challenge, it also allows us to see needs in a way that would normally be impossible for people to see that are outside of a family relationship. If we take the history or potential emotional triggers, you know, although our lives are a journey and they can have their ups and downs, it can also provide the perfect foundation of trust for giving to actually take place. And third and finally, if we get into familiarity, although expectations can be detrimental to our giving, the familiarity of family allows for people to feel comfortable reaching out when they need help or find themselves in tricky situations. So if we're dealing with this two-edged sword, what can we really do to flip the switch and take advantage of this beautiful environment of family giving without getting burned from all the potential barriers that show up? And as as we continue to kind of work through this as a team, we thought about a couple of suggestions that you can think about as you walk into the holiday season and see more of your family and as a byproduct, likely see opportunities to help them. So the first thought that we have on our end is to really get clear with your giving intentions. Family giving can often be generic in nature. And this generic approach can be really a like a breeding ground for expectations. So getting clear with yourself around what you feel comfortable with or what you have capacity for before you reach out to those that you love to help will really start to allow you to show up clear and kind. Now, we've, we've talked about this before on the podcast, but sitting down and mapping out your capacity within your time, talents, and money can give you a great place to start with those that you love and care about. The next thing we've thought about is to start small with your giving. Because our relationships tend to be deeper with our families, it can seem really easy for us to take on the big, hairy stuff with them. Now, while this can absolutely be the case and can be a, a really valuable way to draw closer to your family, my suggestion is that unless you have had a consistent history of giving, starting small so that you can build a solid foundation with much less risk involved is the way to go. So. Instead of telling your sister that you will watch her kids every weekday so she can get back to school, try and just take on a date night. Or if you notice that your dad seems to be struggling to get the garage reorganized, 
offer to first help him with his office and then move into the garage. And finally, if your mom is feeling a little bit lonely because she is the only one that is home with dad these days, consider not just saying, hey, mom, like we're going to get on the phone every day or text every day. Think about planning something out like saying, hey, let's talk for 30 minutes every other week or let's uh, make sure that we stay in contact by texting and not talking every day. You know, really finding these small steps that might feel like they aren't changing the world, but they in turn are giving you and your close family members an opportunity to build a foundation so that giving can continue to grow. Now, finally, my last suggestion is to focus on clear communication. Now, most people care a lot about their families. And because of this, we often jump headfirst into giving without asking and without learning what would actually be helpful. And my rule of thumb is always to ask before you leap. You know, in, instead of observing and then immediately helping, take a minute to be with your family member around their situation and see if first they are open to the help and then ask some follow-up questions around what would be the most helpful in the situation that they currently are facing. I think you'll be really surprised to find out that people know a lot more about what would help them than we often do. And taking just a quick minute to get in front of it and ask them can really pay dividends for your giving experience, not only because you'll find out why, but it will also allow the other person to feel like they are involved with the giving on their end. So it doesn't feel as uh, surprising to them or uh, not as useful as it could be in the first place. Now, there are always exceptions to this rule, but know this, the, the less communication that is done, the greater opportunity there is for misunderstanding and hurt feelings. While it's true that there can be challenges to family giving, such challenges should not be seen as a blockade for our kindness. If we can get clear on our intentions, start small and communicate, the family becomes a special place where everyone can learn and practice the skill set of giving. And this practice can allow us to build this skill, which in turn can be taken out of the family and into the quote unquote real world so that we can continue to broaden our impact. Now, at the beginning of this podcast, I talked about how it was going to be a two-part series. And next week, we are going to be building off of what we just talked about in this episode and talk about how giving can become even easier in families if a family is intentional around creating a culture of giving. Well, team, that's it for me. Let's go out in the world and create good with our time, talents, and money together, especially during this holiday season with our families. Talk soon.